Welcome to Tiki Central Canada. Ever wonder what's in that cool, refreshing drink that you just have to have on that hot summer's day? Mmm, me too. Picture a man going on a journey beyond sight and sound. He has left society, he has entered Tiki Central with palm trees, beach sand, blue skies, and God, get me a drink now! Here are your hosts, Craig, Cam, and Paula, and their wacky views in drinks, life, and maybe information? Hey folks, and hey, how we doing? It's Craig here from Tiki Central Canada. How you doing? I am your bartender, mixologist, and hopefully information for the hour. Hopefully. Hopefully. Oh, there's Paula. There she goes. She's got a tour. She's got a chirp in there. How we doing? Hi. Hi. You just came back from a trip. Now, where'd you go? Miami. Miami. I'm in Miami. What else you, is another terminology you use? My, Miami or? Miami. Miami. That's it. <laughs> is, that a na- is that a native thing down there? Like, Miami? No, it's, it's just how the Latinos Slang. say it. Ah, okay, That's okay. the Spaniard way of saying it. Ah, gotcha, got you. Okay, I got you. Okay, cool. And hey, guess what? Mark is back. I am here. And he's here, and he's not doing Mark Adventures today. He's doing again co-host. That's right. I am the uh, Ed McMahon. We Ed, talked the about. Ed McMahon chair. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't know that. It was just funny how you did it. <laughs> Oh my god, it was Hi hilarious. Craig, how are you? I'm good because I just came back from Antigua. I was there for two weeks. It he was doesn't great. even it he doesn't great. even give us time to ask where did you come back from? He tells us first. But yeah. good. It's good because that's what the listener wants. Yeah, that's right. This is where the show's all gonna be about today. So you had an awesome time? I had an awesome time. It rained the first week almost every day, but it rained for like, you know, five minutes there and then five minutes there. We got sun sun, and then the second week was all sun. And it's weird because when we talk to them, we're like, what's with all this rain? They're like, no, we normally don't get any rain right now. This is the weirdest thing we've ever seen in 20 years. So we're like, oh, great. This is typical. And then the second week was like no rain at all. So it was like, okay, we got, we got our sun. We got our winter. Did you have to shovel that rain? Exactly. That's what I told Norma. I was sitting there complaining about the rain. And I'm like, Norma, we're not shoveling it. So hello. Or she'd be like, yeah, the Buffy's kind of boring. I'm like, well, again, it's not snowing and we're on a beach. So does it really matter? You know what I mean? It's like... <laughs> so yes, I do want to talk uh, and, and give a heads up to Starfish Jolly Beach Resort. That's where we stayed. And we had a great time there. We talked to a lot of the people there. and Everyone was very friendly. And also, too, I want to talk to, and say hi to Jermaine, who was our tour guide while we were there. So the cool thing is, is that Norma goes when we go on these trips and she goes and does some information. And so one of the blogs that she found was that this guy named Jermaine actually does like tour excursions like through basically a taxi very elaborate taxi where he just takes you to places and tells you all about the, the, those locations and so we met him on about the second or third day we we're there and the guy was amazing he drove us for two or three days around the island and showed us all kinds of stuff and was like basically he just hanged out with us for two or three days and um jermaine actually i want to thank you that actually on our last day he literally came to say bye to us on the beach it was, was very like touching, like, oh, it was so nice. And he actually brought us gifts. So he Aww. brought us shirts and hats and a license plate that's going to go on the tiki bar. That's cause, super cute. Yeah, because we told him we had a tiki bar. He goes, okay, well, I'll give me a license plate. I better see it on the tiki bar. Because he actually talked about coming to Canada, and maybe he will. We will see. And, uh, you know, we had a great time. It was awesome, for sure. And that's, well, we'll get into more information about Antigua, of course, throughout the show. But yes. Yes. He yes. yeah. was very nice. Yeah. Yeah. It was awesome. We had a great time with him. Obviously, if Mark or I ever go to Antigua, we will be looking for, for Jermaine. Jermaine. Exactly. Yeah, for sure. I thought of, you know, popping in to surprise them. No way. That would have been so hilarious. That's actually a true story. No way. I did not know that. I well, you were, you, not? you were close-ish. In Syracuse? Yeah, sure. Ish. No. <laughs> Ish. A plane ride Here's away. Here's the thing, though. Miami was before they went. Ah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Ah. So, um, Justin and I, for Valentine's Day, we, we thought maybe we hop in and surprise them. No way. That would for be like so... four days. That would be crazy. Yeah. Oh, my God. So, I was, asking, I was asking Norma all these questions about where they were staying. Yeah. And she was being super evasive about it. And I'm like, oh, crap. How am I going to ever find them in that island if I don't have the answers? It ended up it didn't happen. Yeah. But we actually thought of like, oh, that would be so cool. oh my God, you guys here? Like, no way. What are way. you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That would have been cool. We came yeah. to see the beach. Uh, oh, we, wow. we super tried. 
Oh, the, that's so cool. I did not I did not know that. Yeah. That is so cool. Well. I'll let her know. Did you tell her that? I sure did. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah. So what drink will we be covering, obviously, from Antigua? Because you just came back from there. Okay, so, yes, this drink is the BBC. We actually had this drink. It's like not an Antigua drink. It's a Caribbean drink because we had it about a couple of years ago in St. Lucia. Brought it home. I've obviously modified it since then. But, I mean, it's a drink that is very tropical. And almost everywhere you go in the Caribbean, you can find it. And when I was talking to other people visiting other islands on my uh, vacation this year... A lot of them are saying the same thing. They go, oh, yeah, BBC, it's been on this island and that island and that island. So it's a very Caribbean island uh, drink, tropical drink. And so in this drink, it is two ounces of Bailey's Irish cream. Okay. Now, you don't, if you don't have Bailey's, because there are some no-name kind of stuff out there, any no-name Irish cream will work. Is that It doesn't have to be Bailey's, you know, just in case you're on a budget And it's or something. funny that it's super tropical because Bailey's already doesn't start off too it's tropical, right? Irish cream, <laughs> exactly. It's thick. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, so you go half a banana, which we did for ours, or you could do, if you do some banana syrup, like if you're doing artificial banana or uh, flavor or banana syrup, like you get at a coffee shop, whatever, you can do two ounces of that. And then on top of that, you're going to do two ounces of the cream of coconut, like we've done before for the blue Hawaiian and things like that. And so, yes, that is, is the recipe. So it's going to be, yes, so two ounces of Bailey's. Two ounces of uh, this blended syrup and two ounces of cream of coconut. So I'm going to add a pitcher of uh, the cream of coconut uh, water that we use for this one. There is a cream of coconut already on the website already for like from the coffee shop, but there's also one that we bought actually just recently from the grocery store. It's like it's basically coconut water with pieces of coconut in it. Oh, interesting. Yes. So that it's a little more lighter, so it's not so heavy and it's not as sugary. So if you don't want it to be so sweet, then it's a good way to go. <sighs> okay, so. Is it shaken, sirred? So this one we're actually going to blend. Oh. We're actually using a blender. Cool. Woo-hoo. Yeah, so you going to do is pour all those ingredients into the blender. And you're going to blend it, and you're also going to add some ice. Now, uh, before Paula got here, because she doesn't like my ice, crush ice maker, because it makes <laughs> a lot of noise, I pre-crushed a lot of ice and put that into the blender. Now, you don't have to use crushed ice in your blender. It just makes it easier and a little more, yeah, the, cont- the, the texture will be different. Than just using regular ice. I find with regular ice, it takes a while for actually the ice to finally break down and blend. Sometimes you get chunks of ice in there, and you don't want that in this drink. You want it to be nice, nice and smoothy, like a like a uh, slushy. And so yeah, you're gonna put that into pour that into a Collins glass. So the thickness uh, depends on what the ice, how much ice you put into there. So uh, I actually have a Margaritaville machine. We've talked about Margaritaville machine before. The great thing about those is that you just push the button, it shaves the ice into the blender, and from the tension of the blender, it figures out if it needs more ice or more blending. And it's great. The texture is perfect. As soon as you push that button, all the neighbors come running. I know. I've. It's funny. So I've had the Margaritaville machine on my tiki bar for a couple of years now. And every year, just somebody stands at the bar and just watches it like, this thing is amazing. How does it work? How does it, hmm. how does it figure out exactly how much ice to put in there and how long to blend it for? Because it stops. It'll actually stop on its own. And basically the shaving ice, it might need more shaving ice, so it'll sh- drop more shaving ice in the drink. And it's all about tension on the blade. And it just, you know, oh, that's amazing. Yeah, I like it. it yeah. I, I like it. It actually works. I yeah. agree. And yeah, yours is green, I think you told me. Yeah. Mine is red. Mine is a red one. It's an older model. Yours has also got a bigger, I think, uh, container on yours. Yes, yeah, so it actually came with an extra container, and it has a bigger one. Oh. And it has a little bigger ice reservoir at the top oh nice yeah because i always have to put ice in the top like eventually a couple after about five or six drinks i have to add some more ice to the top that uh becomes the shaving ice oh ooh, and yeah. my, mine's transparent Ooh, oh. doesn't exist because <laughs> she doesn't have it yet exactly <laughs> <laughs> over there in the corner as you can see in the kitchen counter there that there's an invisible margaritaville machine right over there i felt a little excluded <laughs> okay oh mine's red mine's green okay oh Mine's see-through. Yeah, mine's <laughs> not existed. It doesn't exist yet. yet. Well, wait, yes. wait, wait. In our defense, you have a fridge that makes crushed ice. So that come is on. true. Yeah, come Hello. on. <laughs> that's like, true. I was shocked and, and amazed. It, and it, I want one. That's, a, that's an advantage that clearly we don't have. <laughs> They're not in flea markets yet, Mark. I know. Oh, good But point. soon. I know Give I, it another five years. Yeah, I got my bag. I got my ice crusher. And I got my ice crusher, but... I don't have a fridge. <gasps> with, a, with an ice crusher on it. Oh, yeah. boo. Oh, mm-hmm. no. It's, so, a, it's a bit more expensive than the Margarita <laughs> Just a tad. Just That's a tad. tad. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or the yeah. canvas bag. Yes. Exactly. It's a yeah. bit more. A, bit a little more. more expensive than that. You can add a couple zeros. <laughs> not, you're not going to find it at the flea market, that's for sure. No. 
Okay, so some of the alterations that I've made on this, like I said, I brought this home a couple of years ago, and then I kind of play with it. Every but you're going to change the name, right, for each alteration? No, it's still BBC. <gasps> but I always tell people, so you want a regular BBC, or do you want a BBC with amaretto, which is orange liqueur? And so that's what I actually, when I was down there, I ordered a BBC with amaretto, or I also would do a vanilla syrup in there to make it a little sweeter, and or when it's spicy, a cinnamon syrup. I would like to try that one. The cinnamon. I actually yeah. would. So there's I, some I feel options. like that one would be very yeah, nice. That'd be fun. With, but with the banana syrup instead. Instead of the real banana. Yeah. Yeah, the real, real banana. No, even Norma said she was a taste too banana y. Yeah, banana y. Banana y. Yeah, that it didn't, uh, it was too much banana in there. So I remember I had a drink once at a place called the Voodoo Lounge in uh, Charleston, South Carolina. Yeah. And it actually had half a banana sticking out. Half a banana. Yeah, it's like, it's like dessert. Here you go. <laughs> it's got a whole banana sitting there, whatever it is. <laughs> that is so weird. Yeah. Oh my God, it's hilarious. And what? Well, how did it taste? Well, it tastes like a banana. It's a banana. <laughs> no, not the banana. The drink that has the banana in it. Oh, it's very banana e. They, they use banana liqueur and that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. okay. So, yeah. in other words, it was wow. a garnish. Yeah, it's yeah it, was, it was called a monkey something or other, right? Yeah, I've heard yeah. that one before. Actually, I think I've heard yeah. that drink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they had this, this banana, this whole thing sticking out of the thing. That could be the garnish to suck the monkey. <laughs> there you go. A big giant piece of banana in there. there I'm against go. it. I'm not a big fan of bananas, but yeah. I know it's weird. She's like, I don't like pineapple juice, but now she likes pineapple juice. I'm against banana, but she's had banana tonight. And she's like, I don't like cranberry, but she's had cranberry. <laughs> so it's like, okay. It, that's the thing, though. <laughs> I I don't when I, it's I don't like it. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. Because then I'll still try it. Right. No, for sure. You're like me. I try to know what I want anyway. Yeah. yeah. And then I can tell you like, like I like it or don't like it. Yeah. Exactly. Like, yeah. Hey, folks. Here's the thing. I did not like personally any of the drinks tonight. My personal humble opinion. But the three of them, I can see how all different types of people could like. Yeah. So one of them was too boozy for me. One of them, was I'm the not middle? a big fan of cranberry juice. So right, that's, in the middle, yeah. But the taste, like the actual drink itself, yep. is totally drinkable. Yeah. And the other one, it was too banana-y for me. That's why I'm saying I would be open to trying the... Banana and it, and it was too thick. That's yeah. why I think the banana syrup would also be... It would make it a little less thicky. Yeah, yeah, it would be less thick. Thicky, thicky. <laughs> yeah. Don't have the terminology. Thicky. Since we're Thicky. now using E in the end of everything. Apparently, banana, banana E, thick E. Thick e, thick e, e you know, so wall E. Drink E. Mark E. Oh, Mark E. Is this e. a whole new language? Is that what we're doing here? Yeah, yeah. Craig E. <laughs> Craig E. There you go. Okay, Craig E, carry on. No, so one of the funny stories actually is that when they made the BBC down there, they used a thing called Coco Lopez Cream of Coconut. And it comes in a can. And it's a very famous uh, cream of coconut that's been around for like ever down in the Caribbeans and part of the southern part of the states. And so we don't have it up here in North America, or at least where we are anyway. We can't. We don't have it. So I'm at the airport and I'm buying some water and some snacks for the airplane, whatever. And I see cans of Coco Lopez, and I'm like, <gasps> should I buy one? Should I buy one? I'm like, oh, you know what? No, I'm fine. Whatever. So and the can was like two dollars U.S. Yeah. Right. So I get home. I'm doing some research, and I'm like, well, let me just see. You know, maybe I can get. You know, on Amazon, if I can get Coco Lopez, maybe someone, you know, has a supplier. They're selling it for 25 to $50 a can, a can of this Coco Lopez cream of coconut. I looked at Norma and said, you know what we should have done next time is bought a case of this stuff, gone back and sell it off, <laughs> pay for our trip. You know what I mean? It's like crazy. People are spending 25 to $50 a can for this stuff. You know, people are going to start tunneling. And bringing in Coco Lopez into the Canada. Exactly. They're going to be like, uh, you have anything to claim there, sir? I've got uh, two suitcases of Coco Lopez. <laughs> well. that That's a lot. That's a lot of coconut. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> so how was Antigua? Did you learn anything about the place when you were there? Yes. Yeah, so every time I go on these excursions or these trips and stuff like this, I'm always asking a thousand questions and doing a lot of research. Really? Norma does you? a lot of research. Y yes, you I mean, ask questions? I ask questions all the time. Really? When I'm on these trips all the time. Okay. If you get me in a cab with one of these, like, like example, like our tour guide, Jermaine, I must ask him like a thousand questions. Oh, while poor there. Jermaine. No, he loved it. He's like, oh, I love that someone's actually interested in my island, you know, and wants to know more about it. So, yeah. So, Antigua is about 100 kilometers east of St. Kitts. Now, if you don't know where St. Kitts is, and I'm I do not. not know where St. Kitts is, Antigua is 500 kilometers east of Dominican Republic. Okay. So, the DR. So, if you know where DR is, you're about 500 kilometers, go to the east, and there's where Antigua is. Okay, so so Saint Kitts is 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 even closer. Even to closer Germany. to that, okay, exactly. Yes. And um, is it is it like uh, one of those big islands or one of the tiny ones? Yeah. So the island itself is 108 square miles, uh, which is about 22 kilometers or 14 miles long, 
and 18 kilometers or 11 miles wide. Wow, that's tiny. Yeah. <laughs> that's adorable. Like, it's like a <laughs> mini thing. That's, I'm surprised they actually land airplanes on that. It's so tiny. I'm surprised that, that they have a, a floating uh, bar because the whole thing is like a little <laughs> floating, floating house. It's a floating bar. Like, it's it's a floating house already. Like, it's tiny. Go. It's so, adorable. So, here's some cool facts. It has 365 beaches. <gasps> one for on each day of the year. island. Exactly. So, that's their logo. 365 beaches, one for every, every day of the year. Wow. Cool. Uh, their population is 100,000 people. Okay. Yeah. Do you know how many of these 100,000 people are actual from there? So, uh, when it's there, there were some people, I guess, we mentioned before in our conversations and stuff like this, that they go to visit there and then they to stay. And they make a new business there or the new some new adventures or whatever. Uh, we did meet a couple that pretty well they used to stay there and live there because they're retired and they don't want to be anywhere other than there. And uh, so I'd probably say like 90, 95% of the population is actually from there. And really? Then the All that? And maybe 5 to 10% are people that basically visited and never, never oh, left. Oh, cool. And, and is, yeah. um, is the English the main language? So English is the main language, yes. Uh, everyone, she speaks English on the island. It is really weird, too, because the roads are British. So they drive on the other side of the road. So they have the British accent? Um, no, no. But they do get a lot of visitors from England. Like when I was there, there was a whole beach that we were on. There was just nothing but people from England. Cool. So they do get a lot of people from England there. Um, like I said, it's British style on the road. So basically you drive on the opposite side of the road. So normally I rent a car. This time I was like, um, yeah, I'm not renting a car because no. I'll probably get into an accident. I would not be able to do it. Especially on a reverse roundabout. Like, can you imagine trying to do a roundabout? I cannot. Doing it reverse? No. Yeah, that so it's just, there's, there's no way I'd probably get into an accident. Or just be driving so slow that I would be pissing off the locals because they drive very fast. They're very fast on these roads. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I believe you. So is it easy to get around? Uh, so, yeah, so let's talk about some of the transportation on the island. So there's actually taxis and buses and tour guides, like some personal tour guides have their own cars, or shuttles from the resort. So the cool thing that we noticed is that the taxis and the buses were actually the same vehicles. The only way you could tell them apart was on the license plate. So taxi would start with a TX, and then if it was a bus, like, say, driving around the island, it would be, like, BS. Like bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's like, yeah. Also, too, is that the weird thing is that we also noticed that the roads are very narrow. So we asked our tour guide, Jermaine, you know, why are the roads so narrow? Because they literally are driving by each other and like, you're like, inches away from each other. Yeah. Like um, in Italy, in the in the coast of Italy, yeah. it's like that, too. Yeah. It's scary. It's well, because you go around, it's, it's, it's not a straight road. So if you guys know, like in like, any major city, your roads are straight. This is like winding and turning. What and major cities and... are you talking about? Because well, like Ottawa, if I drive down Ottawa, like say if you drive down Bank Street, it's just straight, right? Yeah, but major cities in North America, leave right. that yes. in Sorry. there. Major, because... cities, major cities in North America, you know, your road is straight. It's you go from one end yes. of the street to the end of the okay. street. Okay. But in this country, in most Caribbean countries I've been in, like St. Lucia and all that other stuff, it is curvy and windy and yeah. up and down on the hill. It's, yeah. It's, yeah, so it's not a straight line whatsoever. So the roads are very small. And what it is is that I asked them, like, to remain our tour guide, like, why the roads so narrow is that they originally were built for the donkey and the wagon was their only way of getting around the island before huh. cars got there. Yeah. So once the cars came into play, they didn't have any room to expand the road because literally the houses are right on the road. Like there's like no sidewalks. Yeah. Or very little sidewalks. So literally there was no room once the cars came into play to like, okay, we'll just expand the road. Well, they couldn't. Yeah. So that's why they're very narrow. So there's times where literally we're flying by at a very high speed and you're the car going the other direction and you literally are within inches I mean, an inch sometimes of the other car going the other way. And, I'm, you pretty, know, I'm pretty sure there's not a lot of, you know, um, tourists driving. It's mostly no, no, a, it's locals, a locals sure. yeah, driving. Yeah, exactly. because That's why I didn't rent a car either because I was like, this is going to be crazy. Yeah, you have to know yeah, what you're doing yeah. when it's, you're in a situation like that. Rear view mirrors are going to be gone in five seconds. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, the side mirrors be gone. And so the other thing also I want to mention, too, is that the airport. So when we flew in, we actually had to circle the airport a few times because the airport doesn't have radar. Wow. I've never heard of an airport not having radar. Uh, so they use basically rely on communication to the planes, and the planes have their own radar. Thank God. So, yeah, it was, it was very interesting. So the capital city 
is St. John's. Wait, you have more than one city in this tiny island? Yes, they have more than one city. So how, one how, how big is the, the city? Like, you don't even need a car that has the f- five gears. Like, <laughs> two, three gears tops is fine. Like, oh, no, <laughs> these guys fly. These guys will fly. Yeah, they're very fast when our cars come away. So St. John's is the capital city, and what it is, that's where the cruise ships will arrive. Okay. They'll get up to five cruise ships. Is that where you were, St. John? We, no, we didn't. Well, that's not where the resort was, but we oh. went into St. John's to go shopping. Okay. Yeah, and so in there, there's two docks they have, and in the two docks, they can actually get up to five cruise ships okay. a day. That, that would increase the population by 10%. I know, eh? Could you imagine that? In one day, like within a couple hours, all of a sudden, like it's now one hundred and twenty thousand people. Exactly. That's or maybe pretty 20%, unbelievable. Right? Yeah, yeah, even twenty percent, depending yeah, yeah. on the, depending. I on never the... thought of it that way. All of a sudden, the population just grows within like a couple hours. That's mind blowing. And then they get it back on the boats, and okay, now we're back to a hundred thousand people now. Okay. Yeah. Wow. People can come out now. <laughs> yeah, people can come out now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You can have dinner now, yeah. <laughs> and the restaurants are back to uh, empty. Well, it's funny. So one of the things you get that, and this is actually a good point to bring it up. Is they they tell you so when we went to the talk to the tour guides and of course the uh, the orientation at the resort they literally have an app that tells them how many ships are coming in for the day so they're like oh there's five ships today we're not going shopping you know because this is gonna be too crazy yeah okay oh there's only one ship today okay guys we suggest if you're gonna do shopping this is the day you go when there's only one ship that's cool so then you know what I mean it's not gonna be like super crowded yeah. and crazy whatever right it's good that they have that yeah. sort of information yeah. so yeah it's a cre- they have an app yeah. that actually you need that through. information too for Key West because they can get like up to five ships in. And then this is downtown by the harbor. It's just, ah. Yeah. And so yeah. that means you can't get into Hemingway House. You can't get into this because there's just too many people. Too many people. So you wait till there's one ship yeah. or no ship. My, my, yeah. my beach house in Brazil is the same exact thing. We are on, on an island, right? And, yeah. and uh, But we don't have an app. So <laughs> I'm just lucky enough that our house is right on the sand. Yeah. So we actually see how many ships are, coming ships in. are docked. Well, not docked. They're, they're in the middle of the ocean, right? But they're yeah. just there. Yeah. So we can count, and then we're like, okay, we're not going into town today yeah. because it's going to be ridiculous. And then when the ships leave, then we, are okay, we're walking to town now. Exactly, yeah. No, yeah. Well, no I noticed there, too, like, when we, we went two different days. We went one day when there's three ships there, and we went one day when there's no ships. And it was kind of great, well, obviously, with no ships. There wasn't that many people downtown. But when there was three ships, every on every corner, there was a guy with a map, like, hey, you want to go to the beach? I can take you. They're all taxi drivers, right? Hey, you want to go to the beach? I can get you there in 15 minutes. Come on, let's go to the beach. And we'd be like, no, we're we're staying here. Like we're we're not on the boat. We're we're actually sitting on a resort. Oh, okay, never mind. So that was they're trying to do is they're trying to get people coming right off yeah. the boat and like, hey, you want to go to a beach? I can drive you there. Yeah. Right. I have a question actually about the. You said it's the same cars between bus and taxi. Yeah. How is it big enough though? I'm very confused. How many people fit in a bus? Yes. What kind of car is so it? So it's that basically using? like a stretched minivan or like just like a van. They can get up to I think it's two, four, six, eight. About 12 people. But here's the case. Have you ever been in any Caribbean uh, island where they have these, these taxis or these buses or whatever you want to call them? Is that so there's like two rows on one side and one row on the other side. But as soon as those fill up, there's like these collapsible seats in yeah. between. So uh, there's the aisle that you walk down to get on uh, into the seats. Yeah. All of a sudden you could just close this flap and that becomes the another seat. seat. Yeah. No, which is great. The problem is that if you're planning to be one of the first people off the bus, you have to sit in front, or else the front. everyone else has to go down. Because if for not, you. then you're like, "Hey, can you move the seat? Can you move the seat?" You know, like you, you have to like wait for everyone to get off the bus so you can get off. So you do plan when you do do these trips and you go to these resorts and you go into these islands, folks. Remember that if you're getting on these buses like that, I'm talking about, make sure that if you're going to be one of the first people on, get near the front. If you're going to be one of the last people to get off, go near the back. Yeah, because then you're not going to be disturbed. Right. So how do you request a stop? You just shout? Yeah, it was the weirdest thing. The guy goes, you just say, stop. And then he just, because then they have little, like, sort of wooden uh, shelters. Yeah. So you just say, bus stop. And the next bus stop, after you've yelled, that's where he'll stop. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So it's, it's... There's no ding, there's no bell. It's just, bus stop. And okay. then, yep, he just stops. So it's very improvised. Yeah. Exactly. And how much is the is the fare? So the bus was a dollar fifty US for us, uh, one each way. Each person. Yeah, each person one okay. way. Okay. So and it goes all the way around the island. And so and nearly... how much is that uh, compared to the cab? So the cab. So example, if we went from the resort to St. John's, that'd be about I think they told us there and back was about seventy dollars, <gasps> sixty dollars. Oh my US. God, that's a lot. So we even were talking to Jermaine, our tour guide, the guy that we've had for the whole time we're there. He even suggests, I'm not driving you to St. John's. And we're like, what? You're not driving us? He's like, no, you just take the bus. It goes right out from the resort. 
and the last stop is St. John's. So you're not going to get lost. Yeah. You just wait till the bus stops completely, and the guy goes, get off the bus, and oh, there's St. John's. Yeah, get off the bus that's not really a bus. <laughs> exactly. I wonder, I wonder someone that, you know, never left Antigua, when they leave Antigua, they actually see a bus, they're going, oh my God, oh, it's not a car. <laughs> no, so too, but can you imagine? He's on a real bus, and he goes like, bus stop. Yeah. And the guy's like, keep driving, he's like, bus stop. It's like, no, sir, sir, you need to ring the bell. Yeah. <laughs> Pull the cord. Like, Pull the cord. There's X amount of things you can do. <laughs> Screaming bus stop is not one of them. Well, also, too, but you probably wouldn't even know how the back door would work, right? Because, you know, you have to step down, and that's, like, the pressure belt. Yeah. Thing. He probably would walk. He probably would go to the very front of the bus and get off the front of the bus because he'd be like, I don't understand how this weird door thing works. It's it's you know interesting I mean? to think about these things because when he said the, the taxi and the bus are the same vehicle, yeah. That kind of like blew my mind for a bit, and I was trying to picture what hell of a vehicle it would be. Okay, we can carry on now. Yes. Um, is there anything else you could tell us about the island? Yeah, so actually it is uh, used to be a British colony for 349 years. So Antigua and Barbuda, which is actually the neighboring island right beside it, and they're basically considered the same country, were actually gained their independence in 1981. You want to know something interesting? Did you know? What's that? Did you know? Um, you want to know what Barbuda means? Yes, you were telling me this earlier. What does that mean? So Barbuda in Portuguese, and probably in Spanish, yeah. means a bearded woman. And I'll explain <laughs> to you why. Because in, in Spanish and Portuguese, we use yeah. the A and the O to right. you know say if it's male or female. Right. So Barbudo yeah. is a bearded man. Barbuda is a bearded woman. No way. Which we, doesn't exist, right? But yeah. Still. You ever been to some of those freakish circus acts? Yep, yep, that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that's that's it, the, the mulher, a mulher barbuda, the, the beard, woman. The bearded lady. Bearded lady, yes. Yeah. That's what it's called. So the island is the bearded lady? Yes. <laughs> there we go. Fascinating. <laughs> Isn't it? <laughs> uh, I'm going to be making a trip over to the bearded lady today. Um, what? Pardon me? What was that again? <laughs> yeah, like... and you thought you didn't like bearded ladies. I didn't go there, so there you go. <laughs> Maybe that's one of the reasons why I didn't go. I'm sure you guys still would like it. It's still probably a beautiful island. Yeah. Sorry I ruined that for no, you. No, no, it's okay. Good go. <laughs> so is there anything like tiki related in Antigua? Yeah, so we did talk about uh, earlier in the show about the floating tiki bar. Yeah. But also, too, uh, you know, when Norma does her research for every island we go to, one of the things she found, of course, and she's like, I have to tell you, but uh, don't get super excited, but yes, we're probably going to be going to it, is the Nelson's Dockyard. Wow. So does anyone remember Admiral Nelson is? Is it the, the guy that died and they put it in the casket? That's right. Nelson's blood. So what it is, uh, the story about Nelson's blood was that this Admiral Nelson, who died also in Antigua... Come on, you're not even proud be... of me? Really? I know. I was very impressed. <laughs> wow. Okay, carry on. I have to be like... Ugh. Uh, so anyways, yes, yeah, so what happened was that he died in Antigua. He, was being, he wanted to be transported back to England to be buried. But in his will, he was wanted to be preserved on the trip back. So what it ended up happening was that his body was put into a cask of rum and put on the boat, went back towards England. The problem was that they ran into rum on the boat, and they weren't quite near shore yet, so they weren't clear how much longer the journey was going to be. So they tapped the cask that he was in and drank all the rum to the point where by the time the, by the ship got back to England, the cask was empty except for his body. I still they get grossed out every blood. time he tells the story. <laughs> it grosses me out every single time. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> exceedingly it's creepy. creepy. It's a very creepy story for sure. But I guess you got to remember back in those times, you know, there was sometimes just desperation, right? We go there, we go to Nelson's dockyard, and you can get a little tour. And yeah. the lady tells you about the whole history of the dockyard and everything else. So, of course, I have to, you know, ask the question. So, do you know about Nelson's blood? And she's like, well, I've heard the term before. But I don't know what it's about. So I tell her the whole story. And she's like, wow. And there's people, they're actually in the group with us. And they're like, that's a really cool fact. I did not know that. And the tour guy's like, I'm keeping that one from now on of for the course, tours. As she should. <laughs> and of course, Norma's looking like, Craig again. Did you give her Here your card? Go. Craig's going to figure. <laughs> did you give her your card? Yes, I did. Yes. She could learn some Yeah, more. exactly. Yeah. Wink, wink. There you go. Just saying. So anyway, so Nelson's Dockyard is a British dock that is on the island and is protected by three fortresses, like lookout points. Yeah. Which were also where sailors and officers had their quarters. So Shirley Heights, that is the name of the lookouts that actually protect the uh, the dockyard. It is actually named after the governor, Sir Thomas Shirley. 
So now, wait, so they named the dockyard after Nelson the Admiral? Right. Okay. And then they protected fortresses on the, on the three points. So there were two, there's three mountain points around the dockyard. And those have fortresses up there. Also where the sailors and officer quarters were. And also two, so Shirley Heights was named, like I said, named after the governor, Sir Thomas Shirley, who in November 26, 1781, ordered the fortification to be built around the harbor in order to further protect the Navy dockyard. Your attention, please. Please follow the following instructions of this vacation to help you enjoy your trip and stay safe. Cool. So what about the Star Park Travel? What you got that for that? Oh, State Park Travel. Oh, sorry. State Park Travel. Right. So this was something, I mean, we'd sort of done this before, but this was a different site that I had used this time. So in the past, we'd stayed overnight in uh, Montreal and, you know, you get parking included. You know, I guess it was for seven days, 10 days, whatever it was mm-hmm. when we went. I think it was Curacao when we did this, maybe. Yes. Um, and this time we used a site called stateparktravel.com and... Uh, it was a great deal. So I'd come about this just sort of by accident. As you know, when you're traveling on charter flights like Air Transat or Sunwing, the flight times can be insane. Like you're leaving at six in the morning, seven in the morning, whatever. Um, So it's not always convenient for sleeping and rest. And so what we like to do is stay in, you know, the city overnight because a lot of the flights or places we're going to, they don't travel from Montreal or Ottawa, right? Yeah. They don't travel from where we live. So we stay in Montreal or Toronto or have you. And, you know, our flight this time to Antigua was at 9 a.m. So that's really early. We got to be at the airport like 6, 6.30, something like that. And so what we found through State Park Travel was we got 14 nights of parking and the overnight stay of the hotel for just over $200 Canadian. Now, the cool thing about that, because I was mentioning this to some of the people when it came back, was that it was actually cheaper for us to drive down to Montreal, stay overnight, park the car there at the hotel for 14 days, than to actually go to the airport in Ottawa and park the car there for 14 days. Yeah. Yeah. And we would, didn't spend a lot more than, again, tr- just taking a taxi from our place if we did that to the airport in Ottawa, should we have left from Ottawa, that would have cost us probably 70 bucks each, exactly. w- each way. Each way. Right? And this way we have the convenience of having our own car. Yeah. So yeah. It, it, you know, if you choose to do that, this was a good site and I checked it is international. Well, I don't know if it's international. It's definitely Canada, US because I right. researched it, you know, if I wanted to stay in Chicago, well, they have it in Chicago as well. So very cool. Don't know the extent of it, but it was really good for us. So, so yeah. once you're at the destination, so what are some tips you got for that? So this is a new one that came, uh, you know, I've got a couple things here for that are recently in the news and this is one of them. So check your credit card receipts for the currency type. Yes, because we noticed that when we're there that they'll say, oh, it's either in U.S. dollars on our receipt or it's in... Um, EC. EC, which is like the Caribbean dollar, basically. And so you have to make sure you have the right conversion, right? Right. So we've just started doing this as a precaution as a result of recent news. You may have heard about it. There was apparently um, a recent story about a man who purchased a couple of ice creams for him and his children, three or four ice creams. Um, I think it was in Mexico. I I honestly don't recall. But he was charged something like $4,000 U.S., for a few ice cream cones <laughs> instead of, I guess, 4000 in the local currency. Right. The wrong currency. Okay. Whoops. <laughs> so, okay, great. And since he had entered his credit card pin, and the last I heard, the credit card company refused to refund or correct this error, saying he had authorized the transaction. Right. Because when you put your pin number in, you're, you're obviously there. Right. Right. So you're obviously authorizing the transaction yeah. to happen. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So hopefully he gets his money back, but that's painful. Yeah, so everywhere we went, we were making sure that we not only did we get a receipt, but then also we went over the receipt with the person we were purchasing from to clarify, like, okay, where's the currency? What currency is it in? Where's the amount? Everything, yeah. Yeah. Exactly, and I actually, what I do when I travel, here's a bonus travel tip I hadn't written down. Ooh, a bonus? (laughs) I actually keep all of the receipts, no matter for what, uh, and I get a receipt for everything, like you said, and I bring a small envelope, a manila type envelope with me when I travel, and when I get back to my room, I I, I put all of the receipts in the envelope. This helps me, one, make sure that when I get back home, I can validate that these charges were correct yes. and in the right currency, right. but it also helps me on the way home to determine how much have I spent, how much have I, do I need to declare? Right, when we're going through right? security, right? 
Yeah. Right, through immigration, you have a maximum amount if you're gone for a certain amount of time. This, I can add this up quickly because I've got all my receipts. Exactly. Yeah, you were actually on the plane writing it on the back of the envelope that I all was. the receipts was. Like, and who had like, what? most people will ballpark it and just say, oh, I probably spent like, you know, this much money. And that's okay too. But yeah. if you really kind of want to be a little more... Well, if they ask you, be yeah. specific, then yeah. you can be a little more specific. Exactly. Okay. And so, beach uh, etiquette. Beach etiquette, yes. Yes. Craig wanted me to talk about this one. I just wasn't <laughs> sure I really wanted to go there, but... <laughs> well, no, because we've been on so many trips, and every single time we go on a trip, there's someone who doesn't understand the beach or the pool etiquette. And then we have to explain it to them. And that person usually gets upset or mad or whatever. And it's like, okay, you really should know this information when you're going to another country, and especially to an all-inclusive resort or even a cruise. Like we went on a boat mm-hmm. cruise, same thing. I think that you're too nice and that you give them the benefit of the doubt. And I think they are just a-holes that they know. <laughs> Thanks for letting me beep that out now. <laughs> well, you didn't have to beep it out. I beeped myself out. Okay. <laughs> oh, jeez. I just think these people are not nice. Um, if you're one of them, please stop listening. No. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, at three, four stars, sometimes the five, I can't speak for all the five star because I don't really know how that works all the time. But, you know, I assume it's the same. You may have to get up early to reserve your beach chair and your palapa. Right. This is just the way it goes, folks. So I've seen this at every resort that I've been to. Now, what do you mean by reserve? Like, how do you, how do you reserve your chair or your palapa? How do you... Say, well, sort of mark your territory. How right. are you doing this? So it's pretty much known for most of the travelers that yeah. leaving your beach towel or a personal item. So for us, we leave the beach towels and I always leave two hats. So our hats have little clips or Velcro on the back. So therefore, you stay on the chair. Right. So I can, therefore, I can hook them onto something, wrap them around the chair. They don't fly away in the wind because, yeah. you know, stuff happens. But I leave our beach towels and uh, our hats at the Palapa. Mm -hmm. This lets other guests know that this is your palapa slash chair for the day or for however long you want it. Correct. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So some people are early risers. And so the palapas, uh, listen, if you don't know what a palapa is, it's the, you know. Wooden kind of umbrella. Wooden umbrella that's on the beach, right? Yeah. With the nice. uh, Leaves on it. Palm leaves on the top. Yeah. So for those who are early risers, they will naturally get up. They're already awake. Like yeah. like me, I'm usually awake at 7, She gets up at like before the sun gets up sometimes. <laughs> no, no. Good God. <laughs> no. So I, I get up even early on vacation because I'm just not a huge sleeper. And as soon as my, you know, eye goes anywhere near sunshine, I'm awake. <laughs> So. <laughs> because you want as much sun as possible. That's Second why. Right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I'll get up. I'll even go in my pajamas. I don't care. I will go and I will put my towel there <laughs> because I need shade, right? We can't be in the sun all the day. It's not good for you. Well, so. let's clarify, okay, because me and you've talked about this before. So if a girl goes out, let's say, to the corner store and she's in her PJs, that's okay. <laughs> if you see a guy at a corner store or the gas station with his PJs on, He's probably, what's wrong with this guy? He's a bum. <laughs> he's a bum or he's crazy. You know what I mean? Like, we can't pull that off. <laughs> no. Well, I'm literally out for five minutes to go and walk to the thing. Yeah, it's and, like, you know, I know. So it's, it's, still, it's like, I just want to clarify it because, you know, know, it's a few times I'm in my PJs. She's like, well, just take, just get in, jump in the car. I'm like, I'm not jumping in the car in my PJs to go get milk. <laughs> exactly. I'm going to go put pants on and go. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah. So because I'm an early riser, I get up, I put my towel and, and hat there. And, you know, sometimes there's these people just kind of seem to not get the rule. You know, it's an unwritten rule. And even at places where they say, or oh, you're not supposed to reserve the beach chairs, everybody does. It's just the way that it goes, right? Exactly. It's, that's you know. just international rule here. It's Yeah. yeah. And I mean, if you don't want to get up early because you just aren't that kind of person, that's okay. And just, you can't be super picky about where you want to sit. There's always somewhere to sit in the shade. Yeah. There's always know? chairs. Yeah. Yeah. They don't, I, don't, I don't think I've ever been to a resort where we've ran out of chairs. Exactly. It's just the spaces and where you want to go. Right. So you it's, I mean? like I said to Craig on this trip, mm-hmm. paradise is not free, baby. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Comes to the cost. We have to wake up early in the morning. That's right. Yeah. And one that I want to uh, pass out on this whole, like, reserving your chair and your palapa, and this happened on our last vacation, and I don't think we've ever had this happen before. We've had other things like, you know, like, someone, like, threw a towel and, like, no, you can't reserve the table, the chairs. And we had another lady, she threw one of our flotation devices away, and she's like, you can't save the chair or whatever. So we had our chairs with the towels under Palapa, and because the way the sun works, we were, I think our chairs were on the right side of the Palapa, like the post, right? Right, we were in the sun. We were in the sun. Yep. 
So we go, I can't remember for like lunch or breakfast or whatever it was or whatever it was. And also we come back and these ladies are under the palapa, but on the other side. In the shade. In the shade. And we're like, uh, excuse me? And she's like, what? I'm like, well, this is our palapa. And she's like, you can't reserve a palapa. There's your <laughs> chairs. You reserved your chairs. I'm like, no. Like when you see chairs under a palapa with towels, that's their palapa. Right. You know what I mean, like right. you can't so, infringe on their space because me, example, like I can be in the sun for so long, but then eventually I have to get into the shade part because I'll burn. Right. And right? and to be fair, I mean, you want to borrow my shade, go for it, girlfriend. Like, that's fine. But I am going to need it. Yeah. At some point. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So, like I said, I don't know that she didn't know the rule. I think some of I don't think people, she knew the rule. She just I don't clearly know. did not know I'm the not rule. I'm not convinced that that's the scenario. But anyways. By the way, if you ever are on a beach and we saved our chairs... And you steal Norma's chair. Trust me, I've seen her <laughs> in action. You do not want to go there. She'll embarrass you in front of the entire oh, no, no. beach. Okay, no, no, okay, no. I was not. I'm not that nasty. Like I can be a biatch, right? But and I'm a sarcastic no, person. But, but I was... won't normally cause any kind of scene or fight. However, no, but in Bahamas, that you're was you're talking funny. about Bahamas. Yeah. But this girl was nasty, and she had it coming, right? Oh, so she was giving us attitude. I for sure. don't want to cause a fight. I don't want any trouble. So I'm... no, I have to tell the story. So when the pap was that we, we took the chairs. The story no. So we did. We took okay. the chair row, the rows of chairs behind where she obviously stole our chairs and the entire time she's there with the lady putting a lotion on norma's like god I, and she's saying it out loud so everyone in the entire area can hear her like you know i can't believe people like they're just stealing chairs like they don't even know what the rule is and she's going on and on and on and like some people are just really you know are just ignorant and they they're so stupid and eventually lady's like okay we're leaving here yeah i don't know if we, i was using those words but i definitely I'm was being making polite i know I, well i might have been saying worse words but exactly but again i i'm not out to cause anybody trouble or be nasty and i'm not rude and i yeah. will never cause a scene if you don't deserve it yeah oh no she deserved that lady she deserved, deserved it, it. Yeah, she was yeah, really yeah, nasty funny. and not cool and really rude and horrible so yeah. you know the other thing too, I always want to emphasize too, is that if you are going on an excursion for that day, let's say example case, okay, so you're leaving at nine in the morning from the resort and you're going on an excursion, you're coming back, uh, like say back at three o'clock, don't go out to the beach and save yourself some chairs. That's not really no, fair to no. the, I've seen it. The chair has been reserved all day. No one's at it. And all of a sudden like three or four in the afternoon, someone shows up and I'm like, by that time, other plapas or other chairs are already open because yeah. people have gone back to the rooms now. So don't reserve a chair if you're not going to use it. You know what I mean? It's yeah. just it's just stupid. Yeah, that's that's not nice. No. Yeah. No, we don't do that. I mean, we don't I don't go at 7 in the morning, 8 in the morning, reserve a chair and then we're gone till 1 o'clock. Yeah, exactly. You know, we're back within like an hour, an hour and a half. We're back at the chair. You yeah, know? we we understand. If we go on an excursion that day, whatever we when we get back, whatever's available, that's what we get. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's just the way it is. Exactly. You know what I mean? Thank you. And enjoy your flight. You've got mail. Yeah. When we haven't had mailbag since the first year we did, the first season. So, so guys. This is, actually, this is new. Mailbag, For you come guys, on. if you haven't listened since the first season, this is something new. We used to actually have in the first season mailbag almost every episode. And then uh, it didn't run dry, but we tried some other segments and eventually those worked out better. And so mailbag kind of disappeared. But I always do get questions, and this one, of course, is one of the ones I get, and it kind of fitted this, this show in, in perfectly. Anyway, so Mark, you want to read off the letter that we got? Yeah, this is from Elizabeth. Thank ooh, you. Ooh, do your very pretty spokesperson voice there. This is from Elizabeth. <laughs> Thank you for your email, Elizabeth. <laughs> I recently went on a trip down south to an all-exclusive resort. I won't mention the name for the listeners. While I was at the bar getting my tasty tropical drink, I noticed that measurement of the bartenders is not an issue. Can you answer why that is? Yeah, so I also noticed this too when I was down there at the resort, and every resort I've gone to, um, that, yeah, they don't, they don't, they free pour, and they free pour very heavily. Um, There's one where I actually asked the guy for a whiskey rye and ginger ale, and three quarters of the glass was whiskey, and it was basically topped off with ginger ale. And it was very hard to drink. So what is one of the reasons why they do that is that, one, Everyone's there to have a good time, and of course, the drinks are for free. So as a bartender, one of the reasons why they pour heavy is because they don't want you coming back every five seconds. So in other words, if I make something very light to you, like say if I give you a one ounce of whiskey and then four ounces of ginger ale, you got to wish that back, because these are very small glasses, and then come back five seconds later and say, I want another one, and another one, and another one. 
So one of the reasons why they make it boozy is that you're going to take your time to drink it. And it's going to make you drunker sooner. Drunker very quicker. Yeah, exactly. Also, too, the booze that they use is very cheap. So uh, one of the bottles I, you guys noticed upstairs was a coconut rum bottle. It was a liter for $8. And that's actually me buying it at a liquor store. So the booze that these guys are using is simple bar rail. And one of the reasons um, uh, I want to bring this up is because when you guys go to a resort, it's all-inclusive, and you're ordering your drinks, talk to the bartender, see what kind of rums they're using or vodkas or gins that you want, and see if there's anything that's like more upscale. Because the bar rail that they're using is super cheap booze, and sometimes it can give you headaches and stuff like this, and or nausea, whatever, um, especially if they're heavy pouring. But I mean, the bottle that they're using is probably like two, three dollars. Mm -hmm. So of course, to them, you know, and of course, there's no limit. There's no, in other words, in a resort, there's no liquor cost. You know, not like they're like, well, let's see, we this week we were seventeen percent on our liquor cost. Like, no, they just they keep on pouring and pouring and pouring until, you know, oh, we need more bottles. Right? Because it's an all-inclusive resort. So, like I said, the bottles are really cheap, and that's one of the reasons why they pour heavy. So, uh, and of course, they want to, like I said, they want everyone to get, get drunk and have a good time. So, that's another reason why. So, when you go into a restaurant and you're paying for your drinks, that's a different thing. Because, basically, the, they're measuring because of, A, for consistency, right? It's a more quality drink, right? Like I just talked about, there's no garnish in these drinks. There is a reason why, because they're literally just pumping them out a thousand drinks at a time. They, they don't care... There's a couple of drinks I couldn't drink because they were just too strong. They were too potent. I had one where I had a pina colada, and then he poured the white rum on top. So the pina colada went from a nice slushy con uh, texture to a watered-down drink, and then I didn't even enjoy it. So I ended up going back and getting some outs instead. So yeah. I, have, I have a question that kind of just supports this one. Yeah. So if you want a better quality booze, yes. how, how do you actually pay for that? Is it tipping... The yes, guy so what it is like in a good suggestion, yes, exactly. So tip your bartenders, by the way, folks, or your room, your room service, whatever. But the first day that I get there, I kind of set the bar for them. They know me right off the bat because I'm going to tip them nice and big. So I get two drinks, I give them five dollars, and because it's all inclusive and I think it's free, right? They're like, oh wow, okay, five dollars. So but, then, but do you already right off the bat tell him I want these two drinks, but I definitely don't want whatever rum you you have there no, on I, hand. I, I, I would rather a plantation. Oh, no. So what I'll do is I'll actually just drink the drinks as they, they make them, whatever. And then once talking to the bartender, also, too, I'm telling them I'm a, I'm a bartender as well, but also tip them nice and heavily at the beginning. And so then once they know you from tipping and also talking to them, then you can ask them, like, what other bar, sorry, what other rums do you have or whatever vodkas you have or whatever, like, whiskeys you had. So there was a rum they have here. It's called English Harbor in Antigua, which is a premium rum. Okay. So the Cavalier is not the one you guys get. It's sort of the bar rail. And so the uh, so English Harbor rum is a more premium rum, more expensive rum. And so that was something where down the line I started asking them, can I get my rum and Coke with the English Harbor rum instead of the, the bar rail? And so if you're tipping them and you're taking care of them, then yes, they'll they'll take care of you as well. How come the open bar um, all-inclusive resorts even have the the most ex more, more expensive option though? It's, you know, it's, I mean, those bottles are usually, like, Mark, I think we mentioned in your conversation earlier today, usually they're underneath, like, they're yeah. not displayed, yeah. you know, behind them. They're usually somewhere, like, in a cabinet somewhere or on a shelf below them somewhere. It's that. So, in other words, when you go to a regular bar and you're buying your drinks, of course, they want to show off the premium because they want you to buy the premium liquor. So, that's why they're behind them or up on a higher shelf so you can see them. When you're in an exclusive resort and you're at those kind of bars... It's different. They want to hide that because they want people pointing. They want people to point that out because they are more expensive. Yeah. They want you just like okay, whatever rum you got, you're just going to use on those. Is drinks. it forbidden for them just to have the one option of rum, the cheap option? It's not forbidden, but they usually just mix. Like example, because most customers don't know about bar ale and premium. They just go there and go, I want a pina colada. Oh, right? I see. Okay. Oh, I want a rum and coke. Right, they, mm. they're not educated enough to go. Well, what kind of rum do you have for my rum and coke? Yeah, they're just like your rum and coke. And again, they're just there to have a good time, and the drinks are free, so they're not going to get picky. Usually, there's I found a couple of places they had higher end stuff lower down out of the way mm -hmm. for when management and their friends would show up. That's when the good stuff would come out. I see. Yeah. Cool. That's so, that's a good travel tip too. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you, Elizabeth, for your question. I hope that answered it. There we go. Mm. So let's tell everybody who we are. We're at the end of the show. We gave a lot of information today. We're at www.tikicentralcanada.ca. Or .com. 
There you go. And on that page, you'll see this episode and the recipes for all these drinks we did today. And also to Mark's Adventures. Um, so Mark's Adventures pages on there. And by the way, upcoming show. We normally don't talk about upcoming shows, but this is a really exciting one. We're doing which tiki bar we've kind of been leading up to? Uh, the Maikai. The Maikai, yes. So we're going to do the Maikai. And then also, too, uh, in March, me and Mark talked about this because people have asked us, you know, like, hey, summer's coming along and I want to have tiki parties in my backyard. What kind of music should I have? And so I was talking to Mark about it and we came up with this basically perfect show to do collab a collab yeah it's going to be basically the tiki bar kind of jukebox and what it is that mark and i are going to do give you guys our top 10 playlist of tiki songs that we play in our bars cool yeah so and you'll be able to listen to some of the songs yes and download them if you want to we'll put all the links in it for downloads so we'll make sure of that and so yes yeah, so on that main page is all that information paula has her section in there uh picky pairs i guess uh, no adventures just yet no no something in not the new year yet. something in the new year will, will come up maybe yep and uh, also, too, we have a recipe page, so all the recipes will be on there. Uh, we also have the episode page, so all the episodes, if you haven't been listening, are on there as well. And we have our subscribe page, so please do subscribe, folks. We don't have any commercials, as you can see. Please. 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 We do run by subscribers. And uh, by the way, we're doing really well. We're up to 4,000 now, listeners. Thank our you, all Our website is getting hit 100 times a day, and we're probably getting about 50 to 60 downloads a day. So we're doing really good. I'm, I'm really impressed by that. Every now and then, some, some weird spurts. Like uh, a couple months ago, it was Australia was downloading like crazy. Uh, this last month, France. Thank you very much, France. Uh, <laughs> is downloading it like crazy. And uh, now Antigua. Um, as soon as I started handing out some business cards out there, also Antigua was downloading like crazy as well. So We must be doing something, right? We must be doing something, right? There you go. And uh, yeah, so that's all we got for you guys, folks. And we're going to go off and make some more drinks. And we'll talk to you next time, folks. See ya. Bye. Well, I don't know about you, but I got informed. Guys, hey, guys, where's my drink? No, no, but we should do a pool party out of A that. pool party, of course. I looked up subtle in the dictionary, and your picture wasn't there. <laughs> oh. Hey, you love I that. I like that. That was good. <laughs>